Well, good morning. What a wonderful day to see our young people guiding and leading us in our worship service today. And so thankful for the energy that they've brought to us, and they've given me 45 minutes to preach. <laughs> How about that? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> we are excited for uh, the youth that are here because, again, it is something that we take for granted, but so many churches don't have the opportunity and the privilege of having this number of young people and having the, the children's program that we have, and we're certainly, certainly blessed. So I'm very thankful for, uh, for them being here today. I do have a couple of announcements that I want to mention. As many of you know, Jim Frank passed away this past week, and the visitation will be uh, this afternoon from 2 until, four o'clock, uh, two until 6 o'clock at uh, J.H. Churchill, and then the funeral service will be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock here in the church sanctuary. So uh, please remember the Frank family in your prayers and be with them and uh, give them a, a, a word of a prayer and attention if you can. Also, I want to um, express, I think, our appreciation, all of us, to uh, Lucas and Parker and Will for an outstanding uh, performance this week. So uh, thank you guys for what you've done. We are a blessed community and we're, we are thankful for all of the ways in which we can worship and play together and work together in this community and we have so much to be thankful for. Now just to get it out of the way, yes, I know I look like Big Bird, <laughs> but <laughs> as I've been reminded, life goes on and we are glad that you're here today and to be a part of this very special children's message. Uh, they talk to us about the parables of Jesus. They've been learning that in uh, their, their classes, about those parables. And the, one of the things that excites me about the program of our, our, not only our children, but our youth, is that they do deal with the Bible, and they deal with Scripture, they deal with life lessons, they deal with things that they're going to be facing in their lives. And so in today's Scripture, they ask that simple question, uh, the disciples, sir, we would want to see Jesus. We want to see what Jesus looks like. So I've brought something to help me see. You know what these are? What are they, binoculars? Whoa, that's too close. So I can see people a whole lot better. Let's see, way back there in the back. Uh, a couple of them are sleeping. Yeah, I see that. And way up there in the crow's nest. Don't jump. They are. What does Jesus look like? Do you know? Do you think he was tall or was he short? Tall? Well, that's okay. What do you think he was, uh, had long hair or a uh, flat top? No flat tops? Um, a flat. Okay, we got one flat top. Okay, do you think he was uh, skinny or a little uh, heavy? Heavy, okay. <laughs> good, good, good answer. <laughs> Do we have any real pictures of Jesus? No, we just have paintings, don't we? We have paintings and drawings and things we have, but we don't have any real pictures of Jesus. So how do we understand what Jesus looks like? How do we understand who he is? Don't we do that through the way he lived his life? And you've been studying some of those things, haven't you? So that's important. We look at, to see Jesus, we look at how he lived his life and the things that he did. And I understand that you've been learning some parables. And one of those parables was the parable of uh, the Good Samaritan. And you remember that? We just had that portrayed here for us. And that was a wonderful presentation. The Good Samaritan was an individual that showed love and concern for his friend or for a stranger? A stranger. He didn't know the man, did he? He was totally, he didn't know him. And I loved it whenever they talked about the priest and the Levite that ran away, click, 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 click. You know, they were, they were getting out of there. Sometimes people do that when they see things that they don't want to deal with. They run away real quick. They don't want to deal with this problem. 
And that's bad because, again, we all have problems. Do you have some friends? Do you have at least one? I hope everyone needs at least one friend. And if you're really lucky, you may have two. <laughs> we all have, hopefully we have friends, friends that will help us if we ever have a problem or a need. Friends that will listen to us if we ever need to talk about something. And that's what it means to see Jesus. We see Jesus, we see him as our friend. Do you think you can talk to Jesus? I think so. That's a good answer. Good answer. Yes, you can talk to Jesus. And will Jesus listen to us? Yes, he listens to us and he wants to help us. But in order for him to help us, we have to talk to him. And when we talk to him and we, we have that friend, they sing an old song in the church. And I know you guys probably don't know it, but it's entitled, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Do you remember that? You don't, but you older people back there should remember. Wake up. Uh, you should remember that. What a friend we have in Jesus. And because of that, we get a picture of Jesus. Now, there was another parable that you talked about, and that was the parable of the prodigal son. What did the prodigal son do? What did he do? He got angry. What else? He ran away with his father's money. Ooh, that's bad, isn't it? In fact, he more or less said, Daddy, I wish you were dead. You would never say that to your daddy, would you? No, never say that to your daddy. <laughs> daddy, I wish you were dead. And he ran away with his father's money. He thought it was his money. It's amazing how we sometimes think things are ours when they're not. That's a little deeper for some of you out there. Hmm? It's, it's all, it all belongs to God. So he ran away with his money, and what did he do with it? Huh? He wasted it. He bought things. If you have the choice between saving something and giving something or buying something, what do we do? A lot of times we buy something, don't we? And it would be better if we saved it and we gave it to help others or we made a difference in the world, but a lot of times we just buy things. So what happened to this prodigal son? Did he have a great life and a wonderful existence? Was everyone happy? He wasn't happy, was he? And what happened eventually? Jager? He went back to his father. It says that he was slopping pigs in the pig pen. Have you ever done that? It's not a clean job. It's not clean. He was slopping pigs in a pig pen, and he finally came to himself and said, I'm better off at home. And so he went home. Now, what happened when his father saw him coming? Did his father give him a whipping? What did he do? What did his father do? Explain it. Hugged him? Forgave him? Rejoiced? Was happy? Huh? Full of glee. That's right. He was very happy because this prodigal had come home and he was so glad to see his son. Do you think God is glad to see us? I think he is. I think it I think it warms the heart of God when he sees us do good things and when he sees us worship him. That's something that God appreciates and it, it makes God feel good and God rejoices when we do those things. Now the third parable that you learned about and we talked about a little bit was the parable of the wise and foolish builders. What were they building? They were building houses and they had two choices they could build one on explain it, sand and the other on the rock. Now that's quite a choice, isn't it? So how would you choose which way to build? If you had all the money in the world and you had no, no, no problem there, how would you choose? One that would last the longest and one that was the sturdiest. 
But what if it took longer to build on the rock than it did on the sand? What if it was quicker to build on the sand? Wouldn't that be better? Quicker's not always better, is it? That's a hard lesson. Well, how did they learn? Because it talks about the wise and foolish builders. So some of them listened to their friends about what was right and how to build, and others didn't listen, and they built on the sand. So God wants us to listen and then to obey what he tells us to do. Do you always listen to your mom and dad? Sometimes. <laughs> Confusing, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it better when you do listen to them? Yes, it's better because they know, they know things that maybe you don't know and they're trying to help you. So through these parables, we get a picture of Jesus. We get a picture of a friend who loves us. We get a picture of someone who forgives us of our sins. We get a picture of someone who will listen to us and will help us if we'll trust him and obey him. And that's a wonderful picture, isn't it? So I hope, and I hope you continue to learn more and more about God in your life. And as I was sitting there and looking at all of you stand up here, I thought how marvelous it is that God is working in your life right now because one of these days you never know how God will lead you to do something great and grand for him. And I think just being here and being a part of this service is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Now, I have a picture of Jesus. And I want you to look at the screen, and I'm going to show it right now. Are you looking? Do you see the picture of Jesus? I do. I see it all over the place. I see it in friends, in colleagues, in neighbors. I see it in wisdom and energy. I see it in youth. I see Jesus in you. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.